welcome to the Seek First CEO podcast, a community for high achieving kingdom women committed to seeking God first and keeping God first in all we do. If you believe you're called to impact the world through your gifts, then you're in the right place. Hi friend, I'm Heather, teacher turned speaker and your host of the Seek First CEO podcast. I'm passionate about helping ambitious servant hearted women find their worth in whose they are, not what they do. As a certified master neuroscience life coach, I help you connect the dots between biblical principles and brain science so you can take your thoughts captive and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I don't do surface, so we go deep here and we talk about the stuff underneath the surface because I want to help you get to the source of your heart set and mindset roadblocks so you can have breakthrough by aligning your heart and mind with biblical truths. If your heart's desire is to grow in your relationship with Jesus while fearlessly fulfilling your purpose and calling, then let's open up the word together and see what the Holy Spirit has to say about living your life in flow with him. Are you ready? Then get excited for today's episode. If you have been on this journey, whether you just started or you have been at this for a decade or more, there is no doubt you have come up against discouragement and disappointment as an entrepreneur. And that's why in this episode, I want to talk a little bit about it and the reality of it, because we live in a world where we post all of the highlight reels and all of the big things that happen. And we have X amount of downloads and we signed a new client and we had a 10K month and earned the trip, et cetera, et cetera. And behind all of those successes, there are absolutely, I know, have been disappointments and discouragement And really, I think often it's the enemy trying to get you off track from the destiny that God has for you. And so I was thinking a lot about discouragement because really, I work with high achieving, hard working people who are coming up against discouragement and feeling like I just can't figure out why I'm not further along. Disappointment, they try something new and maybe it doesn't go as planned or they launch something and they don't get the response that they were hoping for. And so how do you fight those things to pull yourself back up, get back in the game and be excited and expected and confident that this is part of the journey and you get to continue to move forward. So I'm a word nerd. If you've listened to any of my other podcasts, you know that by now. And so I looked up the prefix dis literally means the opposite of or lack of, which really got me to thinking that there is no lack in the kingdom. There is no lack in the kingdom. So discouragement, disheartened, disappointed, all of those words, means that there is a lack of something and or it's the opposite of something. So let's just take the word discourage, for example. I remember in a season, I felt so discouraged. And so I did a word study on it. And literally, discourage is the lack of courage. And you got to think about the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came to give us life, life of abundance. And knowing that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, that got me to thinking that he even wants to steal and kill and destroy the courage that we have inside of us. Knowing that God is with us, he's gone before us, he's beside us, he is behind us, and that many scriptures tell us to be strong and courageous, to have courage. Why? Because God knows it's going to take courage for you to fulfill your role, for you to help those that you are called to help. And the enemy would love to do the opposite of that and get you to believe that you, in fact, lack courage. Disappointed. I don't know about you. I've recently heard, and a friend of mine said, you know, she was taught by a mentor of hers years ago to be undisappointable. Like, don't, don't allow yourself to be disappointed by others. And I love that concept because it's, it's that whole idea of, you know, don't give away your power, take back your power. Nobody can make you feel a certain way unless you allow their thoughts or their words to be truth to you. But with that, if you think about disappointed, and if dis means lack of or the opposite of, appointed, 
appointed, which made me go down this rabbit hole of what is, you know, what's the actual word appoint mean? Well, appoint means to select or designate, to fill an office or a position, to fix or set by authority or by mutual agreement, to equip. (gasps) You and I are equipped for something. We are appointed. We have an assignment to do something. And the enemy wants to make us believe the opposite of that, that we don't have a calling. Today, actually, one of my clients messaged me and said, I don't think my story is powerful enough. Like, I don't have that much trauma in my life. First of all, let me just tell you that that is one of the biggest lies of the enemy to make you think that because you weren't the, you know, big T trauma in your life, because there's the big T trauma, and the little T trauma, the enemy does not care how he uses trauma in your life. All he's trying to get to is the root of who do you believe you are and who do you believe God is? Do you feel loved? Do you feel safe? Do you feel valued? Do you know your worth in Christ? Because if you don't, then you're not going to operate and get to the destiny that God has for you. Hence the assignment that God's given you that the enemy is dis. He's lacking. He wants you to feel that there's lack and or the opposite of the calling that God has in your life. And so how do we overcome disappointment, discouragement? How do we overcome these things when it is bound to happen? So many people that I work with or have worked with over the years you know, they, I, well, if you're in my circle and you're in my close circle, I'm not going to let you give up on the things God has for you. Sometimes there is a time to quit. There is a time to give up. And I don't think it's really giving up. Sometimes it's giving in and saying, you know what, this isn't good for me. And I've fought for this for so long. For example, for me in network marketing, you know, I knew that there was a season that God was saying no more. And it was very fruitful. And so it wasn't me quitting. It was me being obedient to God saying, I'm doing a new thing. With that, if you hang around me, I'm not letting you quit on the God things. I'm not letting you quit on the dreams that he's given you and the assignment and the calling on your life. And so some of the ways that we can overcome the battle that's there and it's going to happen We can't always be on the top of the mountain, right? God promises that he will be in the valley as well. And oftentimes as entrepreneurs, that's where we get discouraged and we get disappointed and let down. So how do we overcome it? Here are four tips. First and foremost, don't try to power your way through it. Get honest about how you are feeling with the Lord. God is not intimidated by your feelings and your disappointment and your discouragement. In fact, I believe that the disappointment in your life is a sign that you have an appointment with your father. You have an appointment with Jesus. You have an appointment with Holy Spirit. He gave me that phrase uh, a year or so ago that said, disappointment is simply a sign that you have an appointment with your maker. He wants to tend to the pains and the discouragement and the disappointment in your heart. He wants to do what I always refer to as the great exchange. Heather, give me your disappointment. Get honest with why you're feeling that way and how you're feeling so that I can hold you, sit with you in it, allow you to feel your feels, and then do a great exchange. I have something in exchange for you. You're disappointed? Let me hold that for you for a second. And then let me give you something in exchange, give you something in return. I teach this to a lot of my clients. I personally am very visual. I love to imagine myself getting into the river that is flowing from the throne room. Sometimes I will envision myself and I'll get into my shower because I'm like, well, here is where we're just going to literally wash off the yuck that I'm feeling. I'm feeling discouraged. I'm feeling so disappointed. And so sometimes I will get into the shower and I will literally take a shower and like, Lord, wash this discouragement off of me. I don't want to feel this way, but I I really feel this way. And here's why. And I, I pour my heart out. And sometimes I journal this and I literally just envision myself stepping into the river that we read about that in scripture that is flowing from the throne room. I can only imagine how crystal clear that water is. Oh, I love the beach. My heart is just aching to get to the beach. It's spring break for us this week, although ours is super short. Um, One of my clients I know is on vacation. They have like a week off. Our kids only get three days, but all that to say, we're not going to the beach this week, but my heart is just yearning for the beach. 
Because there is something about water. There is something about nature. There is something about the ocean that I think the Lord just meets people there. And with that, I imagine myself standing in the river that is flowing from the throne room. I like to imagine myself washing off the disappointment, washing off the discouragement, telling Jesus how I really feel. I'm not trying to just muster up my strength and muster up my faith. And yes, all those things are good to do, but getting honest with how we feel is the first thing. So many of us have been shamed to feel what we feel and our feelings haven't been validated. Perhaps that it was as a child or maybe religion got in the way and there's shame for feeling the way that you feel. God is not intimidated by your feelings. Jesus had lots of feelings. God has lots of feelings. We read about it all throughout the Bible. So why wouldn't you think that he wouldn't want you to have feelings? Now, that doesn't always mean that your feelings are true, right? Because feelings come after a thought. And so sometimes it's your thoughts that's the, right? So let's just take disappointment, for example. Let me give you an example. So I have launched many things over the past few years, especially when it comes to coaching. And I've had very successful launches, the ones that I post about. And I have very had very not successful launches, the ones I don't post about. And so let me let you in on a little secret. Two years ago, I launched my signature program, Made to Flow. And it is an amazing program. I actually, when I first launched it, I didn't tell anybody about it, but I had enough people in my inbox asking me about one-on-one coaching. And I felt like this would be such a great opportunity for me to get them to to be able to work with them in a one-on-one capacity, but also to get them into a group coaching setting to where I could teach them my new program, all about neuroscience and biblical principles to help with mindset and heart set, to get unstuck, okay? So I, I had eight women join that, and I didn't even post about it. I didn't even, I didn't have a sales page. I didn't talk about it. I had eight women join, and it was awesome. I launched it the next round, and I believe I had 12 women in it, which was also great. Like, yes, the next round, I had three people sign up. And then the next round, I had zero people sign up. I repeat, I had zero people. And let me tell you, every time I deliver the program, God's taken me on a deeper journey and given me deeper revelation and understanding and tools and ideas and tips and tricks and better ways to to help and serve my clients that I thought, man, this is the best that I'm at. Why are people not signing up? This, I truly believe, is a program that every believer should, should go through and have access to. And it's worked before and I've had great success in the past, but the last launch, I had zero people sign up. Let's talk about disappointment. I thought this was gonna be the thing. I thought this was this was the program and the assignment and the thing that was going to be my signature thing that I help everybody do. And I had nobody sign up. So I was discouraged. I was disappointed. And the Lord said, Heather, I'm not intimidated by your disappointment. Your disappointment means you've got simply an appointment with me. Come to me. Sit with me. Come to me, all who are weary and laden, and I will give you rest. And that is really part of what's led me into this season that I'm in now of closing my inner circle and not relaunching the Made to Flow and really focusing on me and the Lord and the book, which by the way, has been on pause because the Lord has me in a deep healing because the disappointment that I had was simply an appointment with the Father. And that is number one. How do you overcome discouragement and disappointment? Set time aside to sit with the Lord, get honest about your feelings, take it to the Father, take it to Jesus who is a friend, take it to Holy Spirit who is a counselor, your advocate. Knowing the different characters and nature of God and how God and Jesus and Holy Spirit as a Trinity just literally are everything that we need. And God gives us people is such a gift. And so that's number one. Number two How do you fight off the discouragement and the disappointment? Well, once you have spent time with the Lord and you've been honest about how you feel and tell him unfiltered, tell the Lord how you feel, 
Declare the truth over your situation or truth over your life or truth over your identity, whatever it is that the enemy is coming against, because that's where the battlefield is. It's why we want to get to the root of what you are actually thinking and your feelings are and getting honest with your feelings, expose the thoughts that you're believing. Maybe in my instance, you know, it's, well, maybe this isn't what God has for me, or maybe I'm really not that good at this, or maybe I'm terrible at marketing. What's, you know, that that's really what I came down to. I'm like, listen, I know the program is good. I know that I am anointed and I'm gifted. And this is an, this is such a place that God has called me. And so maybe it's, I'm terrible at marketing. And so what do I do? Well, I'm like, well, I got to find somebody that can help me with marketing and copy because clearly I'm good at this, but I, I'm not, I am not relaying that same information to other people. And while that may be true, what the Lord was really calling me to was a season of rest, a season of slowing down, a season of deep healing, an appointment with him, which for us doers is not always easy and really not always fun. But I am seeing that God actually told me to write the book, not about, it's not about the book. God told me to write the book because he knew if he gave me an assignment, I'd do it. And he knew in the wrestling of completing the assignment, because I'm a good girl and I want to do what the Lord told me to do, that I would come to a place where it forced me to find healing in parts of my story that I didn't even know needed healed. And that is how good our father is. So your disappointments are not intimidating to the Lord. They are simply an appointment to set time aside with him so that then you can recognize the lies that you're believing and declare truth over your situation. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your soul is what the enemy is after. And he would love to discourage you and disappoint you enough to get you to believe the opposite of truth, the lack of, dis, right? The opposite of. So you get to declare truth over your situation, over who God is, over who you are, because the truth is what sets you free. Jesus is the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. So this is where we get to realize, wait a second, what is really going on here? It started out as discouragement, but man, if we can hear the Lord beckoning us and calling us to him for an appointment to sit with him, we can then overcome this because the truth is what sets us free. Another really practical way to do this is that sometimes when we're discouraged and we're disappointed, we focus on everything that we don't have, everything that's going wrong, everything that didn't work out. Your brain needs to be reminded that that's not always true and that it's not that you never have success. Some of those toxic words that we use, the never, always, those create stories in our minds that we get stuck in these stories And so writing down a list of things that have worked out for you or that you are thankful for, giving your brain evidence that the thought that you're believing is not always true. And that reminding yourself and focusing on what you do have and what you are grateful for and what is going right will shift your perspective. And then last, The fourth tip of overcoming disappointment and discouragement. If discourage is literally lack of courage, then the opposite of that would be to have courage. And so I encourage you to get over this. Do something scared. Do something that makes you a little uncomfortable. Do something that's outside of your comfort zone. Because the enemy is trying to make you believe that you are less than, that you don't have authority, that you don't have power. And where God is saying that is so not true, the enemy is underneath your feet. Stand up, get off your mat, and go. So do something that's a little scary, that's a little bit outside of your comfort zone, that's uncomfortable. And that doesn't have to be some huge thing. Maybe it's just signing up for a class. I don't know, but do something that feels a little bit uncomfortable and a little bit scary so that you can prove that you don't have a lack of courage, that you are strong and courageous through Jesus 
and that you have authority and power over the lies that have been spoken over you and that you have been believing about yourself and that you are partnering with truth because the truth is what sets you free. And so actually in Made to Flow, what I do is I walk you through recognizing the lies. Once you recognize them, and that takes honesty, right? Getting honest with the Lord. We record, write it down. Write down whatever it is you're believing. Journal it out. Sometimes that takes an hour because you just let it flow. And sometimes it's just one sentence. Oh my goodness, I am believing this lie. The next step is to repent. Repent is to turn away from, to change your mind. Recognizing that this is the lie that I'm believing. Oh my goodness, I'm going to transform my self through, I got to repent of that first. I no longer want to think that way. I no longer want to be in agreement with that lie. And so we repent of that. And that is between you and the Lord. And then we renounce the lie. I am no, I no longer am in agreement with, I have no value or what I say doesn't matter. I do have value. What I say does matter. My voice carries power and authority. And then we refute the lie. And like one of those would be focus on the opposite. What is, that's not always true. Focus on where that lie is actually been proven to be a lie. And there's a few different ways we refute. And one of those is, is biblically. But sometimes y'all, we can like weaponize the Bible against ourselves to like toughen up and just muster our way through things and absolutely scripture is powerful we want to use it we want we absolutely want to use it and we're also uh we also want to make sure that we are not just saying these things but we are actually believing and living these things and then last we want to rewire our brain to believe Whatever it is that the Holy Spirit is exposing of the lies through the discouragement, the disappointment, the disheartening things that we're going through. And then the rewiring creates new neural pathways that you start to operate from a place of truth rather than operating from that place of a lie. So discouragement, disappointment, feeling disheartened, feeling like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. That's all normal. So if you find yourself there, try these four things to help you overcome it. And the biggest one is make an appointment, make an appointment with the Lord. And if you're feeling called to coach, because God does give us people in our lives, sometimes we, I'm a verbal processor. I could not, I would not be where I am today without a coach. I would love to hold that space for you so that we can figure out what are those lies deep in your subconscious that are on these neural pathways that are keeping you stuck in this loop, stuck in a story that are holding you back from all that God has for you and all that God is calling you to do for the kingdom. If that is of interest to you, you can connect with me below in a link, set up a free discovery call where we can talk about you and what you need, and I will give you some free coaching to help you decide whether I am the right fit for you um, or not. And if I'm not, I have a list of people who I'm connected to in this space that maybe they are the right fit for you. But I pray that this blesses you and that you know that you were meant to do hard and holy things. And overcoming discouragement and disappointment is hard and holy work. And it's the very thing that God has created you to do so that you can continue to run the race all for God's glory. So let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for truth. We thank you that the truth is what sets us free. And the enemy is warring for our soul, where our mind is, where our emotions are, so that he can distract us and discourage us and disappoint us in a way that we start to partner with the lies uh, of of the kingdom of darkness. And so God, I just thank you for truth. I thank you for always exposing the lies when we are willing to come to you. And I just pray that any woman who is facing this discouragement and disappointment, Lord, that she comes to you, she spends time to you to allow you to shine a light into what thoughts she's believing that's making her feel this way. And that she is able to overcome this cloud of heaviness with truth. And so God, all of this 
we do for your glory, for your honor, so that we can point others to you the way, the truth, and the life. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.